So with Q1 conducting, it means that we have charge flowing down this path here. Therefore, the LED D1 will be lit. And the charge that collected on the plus side of C1, the 9 volts that was collected on here, will discharge through the collector emitter of Q1 to Earth. That means if we've lost 9 volts on the plus side of capacitor C1, we're going to lose 9 volts on the minus side of capacitor C1. This means that the base emitter of transistor Q2 will now be much lower than 0.6 volts. In fact, it'll be 0.6 minus 9. That means that the voltage at uh, the base of Q2 is going to be very close to minus 8.3 volts. That means it's hard switched off. So with Q2 switched off, the plus side of capacitor C2 is charged to 9 volts. Because that's an open circuit, that will immediately be charged to 9 volts. If that's at 9 volts and the source is at 9 volts, then no charge can, can flow through here because there's no voltage difference. Therefore, the LED D2 will be off. Because Q2 is off, charge cannot flow through it here. So the charge that's coming through R5 to R3 cannot go through Q2. So it will it will collect on the plate of the minus plate of C1. So very quickly, although these resistors in the middle here are much larger, so this time so there's a bit of more of a time delay here for this for this to happen, but quite quickly uh, that the minus plate of capacitor C1 will reach 0.6 volts. So then we've got 0.6 volts dropping across transistor Q2, which will activate it and switch it on. With Q2 now on, conducting, it means that the 9 volt that collected on the plus side of capacitor C2 will now discharge through Q2 to Earth, and because now we have a path for charge through to Earth, it means that D2 will light up. Now since the plus plate of capacitor C2 has dropped by 9 volts, it means the minus plate of C2 will also drop by 9 volts. So that means that where we had 0.6 volts at the base emitter of Q1, we've now got 0.6 volts minus 9 volts, so we've got minus 8.3 volts at the base emitter of transistor Q1. So Q1 then switches off very hard. Because Q1 is now effectively an open circuit, it means the 9 volts of the source now will quickly appear across plus plate of capacitor C1. This means that there's no voltage difference between the source and C1, therefore LED D1 will switch off. With no path for charge to flow through Q1, so we've got no, no longer charge can flow because this is off, then the charge that flows through resistor R5 and R2 cannot go through Q1, it will go to the minus side of capacitor C2 and charge that plate up and very quickly that will reach 0.6 volts. So once the transistor here is at a base emitter of 0.6 volts because of this charging of the minus plate of C2 then Q1 will switch on. When Q1 switches on then the 9 volt charge that is collected on C1 will discharge through Q1. This will force Q2 to, to, to switch off. So the LED D1 will now switch back on and the LED D2 will switch off. That whole cycle will just keep repeating until we disconnect the battery. D1 will light up and then D2 will light up and then D1 will light up and then D2 will light up. So let me just connect that and just show you, and also just show you what the purpose of the, the variable resistor R5 has been put there for. So I'll collect this up. Okay, so that's what, that's what we'll see happening. Now, remember that uh, the charges going through the central part are, are reaching the base. Now, depending on how much resistance we have, we'll 
depend on how quickly the charge can arrive here. So if we if we increase this resistance, it means we're reducing the current. If we reduce the current, then we will slow down this or speed up this repetition. So I'm going to reduce the resistance. It means that more current can flow. So it means that these charges, remember when that's off, that charge charges up through that path here. And capacitor C1 will charge via R5, R3 here. So when I reduce the resistance here, it means they will charge up much faster. So we should see that this, this uh, sequence increases in speed. So let's see if that happens. So I'm, increase, I'm reducing the resistance now. And you can see it's gradually speeding up. Now it's almost. So I keep going. And now you can't really tell that they're flashing on and off. It's almost like they're permanently on. So let's wind it back. So that's a flasher. So you can control it there by putting in a variable resistor here. You can control the speed of the flashing of the lights.